Hey folks, Solo Gamer here, and today we're going to be playing Talisman. And this time we're adding the dungeon expansion to the mix. Now, as, as far as corner boards go, the dungeon is probably my favorite corner board. It's also, in my humble opinion, the hardest corner board. Um, <clears throat> let's have Luke see at it here. We'll put it right here. And basically, um, you get there from the ruins, and of course you go through our thing. And now, like as you know, when we play Talisman, we always move clockwise on the main Talisman board. And on here, you won't be able to go back. Once you go in, you're going all the way to the end. And it's very hard. It's much like the inner or middle tier, where it can be very unforgiving. And then when you come to the end of it, you can fight this cool-looking evil guy here, the Lord of Darkness. And if you beat him, you get a treasure card, which is going to be one of these dungeon treasure cards there. Let's see if I can do it a little better. Yeah, one of these. Um, whether or not you beat him or not, you are teleported to another place on the board. Um, and it could be the crown of command as possible playing apparel and stuff like that and of course we <clears throat> randomly drew an alternate ending we don't know what it is right now we just made sure that's one that uh, doesn't have rules throughout the whole game and let's have a look at our three contestants this time um, that are going to move on to the next round to join the Amazon See who won our first two games we have Amazon and the cat burglar won the first two games I'm sorry, the Amazon and the Bounty Hunter. So, we have these guys. And our first one is our Cleric. Here's my little pretty paint job for the Cleric. And I guess she's going to start at the chapel. And she has special abilities. Whenever you are about to pray, you may replenish one fate. You may choose to automatically destroy any spirits without resorting to psychic combat. When you destroy a spirit in this manner, you may not keep the enemy as a trophy, but you may replenish one fate. I'm, I probably won't do that a lot. You may discard one fate to prevent a, your character from losing a life or one of your followers from being killed. You may only do this once per turn. Well, that's a pretty good ability right there. She has a strength of three, craft of four, life of three, one gold, and three fate. Our next contestant is the Conjurer. And here she is. We got an all female cast going this game. And of course, the Cleric is good, the Conjurer is good. And she starts the game with one spell, and she drew a magic portal spell. During the game, you you always have at least one spell. Gain a spell each time you cast your last one. Okay? You may conjure whenever you encounter a space with instructions to draw one or more adventure cards. If the space does not already have any adventure cards, you may move a face-up adventure card to the same region to your space. You may only do this once per round. And then, so basically, she lands on a space that doesn't have any cards on it. She can move a card to her. She has a strength of two, which is pretty low. Craft of four, life of four, one gold, one fate. And our final contestant is the dark cultist here. And she's going to start in the graveyard. And she is evil. So we will have rules where she was going to be the good and evil characters who are going to attack each other. She starts off with a strength of three, craft of three, four life, one gold, one fate. When you attack another character, you may choose to make the attack psychic combat. You may not do this when you are attacked by another character. Whenever you kill an enemy or defeat another character and force them to lose a life, roll one die to receive a gift from the forces of darkness. If you defeat a good character, you may add one to the score. So we'll be doing that. She can gain one fate, gain a goal, gain one life, gain one strength, one craft, one spell. So she's probably going to be on the offensive pretty much. You are always evil. Ignore any effect that changes your alignment. All right. So here, we're gonna go now. I'm gonna try to build these guys up first a little bit, and then when I think they're ready enough, they may go to the dungeon because the dungeon can lead to a shortcut to the crown of command, and also you get a powerful treasure if you're able to beat this guy. So we may do that. Um, there's also another rule I play with sometimes where you can't get to the crown of command through the portal of power. 
you have to get there through the dungeon. For some reason the portal of power has been closed, the Lord of Darkness closed it, and you have to get there through the dungeon, and you have to beat him to get to the uh, through the portal of power. And um, that's probably what we're going to do. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think that's the way I'm going to do it. So if you want to get to the portal of power, they ain't coming through that way. Or the inner region. They have to beat this Lord of Darkness. And you have to beat him. If you get beat by him and you have to go back to some place on the board, you're going to have to try again when you get built up. But in order to get to the portal of power, you have to beat him. You have to get a treasure from him. Okay? And, uh... That way it makes it to where you eventually have to get on this dungeon board. Because this is a cool board. Look at that. Got a cool looking guard there. Got some evil technicals there. Summoning circle. It just got some cool stuff in it. I, I really like this board. So, uh, if you got a talisman, it's great. But if you have a treasure from him, that's going to be the same as a talisman for the point of this game. Okay? Alright. So let's get ready to go, and we're going to start with the cleric first. And he rolls a five. One, two, three, four, five. And draw one card. Uh, he got magic armor. If you are defeated in battle or psych combat, roll one die. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, sun shield. All right. Okay, let's go with the Conjurer. One, two. Self-Portrait. When revealed, place four lives on this card. Whenever you lose a life, you may discard one life from the portrait instead. This card is card when all its lives have been discarded. Okay, well that's a good little, good little object there. Let's put some four life on there. Okay, let's go with our Cultist. She rolls a two, and she draws one card. And this is armor. Okay, well, she's got armor. All right, our cleric. One, two, three, four, five. She goes to the woods. Golden statue. You have uncovered a valuable relic. The golden statue may be discarded at the city for two gold or at the castle for four gold. If you lose an attack against another character, they must take the golden statue instead of their normal reward. Okay. Conjurer here. Four. One, two, three, four. At the tavern. She rolls a two. Get tipsy. Fight a farmer with strength three. <laughs> okay. Remember, the blue die is always for the bad guy or the enemy. And she beat it. And now it's the cultist turn. One, two. And she's at the chapel, and she's evil, so she will lose one life. <laughs> cleric. One, two. And cleric's at the tavern. One. Get drunk and collapse in a corner. Miss one turn. E. Okay. The conjurer is at the village. Hmm. We will probably go and see the mystic. And she rolls a five, gain one craft. So she gains one craft. Cultist. One, two, three, four. Is that the woods? Flying carpet. If you roll a six for your move, you may teleport to any other space in this region. Mmm, that's pretty good there. <clears throat> Our cleric lost her turn. Conjurer won the fields. And she's got an axe. Alright, and the dark cultist. One, two, three. Lunar event. Well, this is one of those time cards, so we won't be doing that. Sword of Light. No evil character may have the Sword of Light. Ooh, okay. So that's going to be right there. It's the Cleric's turn. Three. One, two, three. She goes to the Ruin. I'm sorry. The Plains. Fate Bound. Event. The Norms have determined the, the, 
Norns have determined the destiny of each character no matter all characters no matter what region they am must discard all their fate and then discard this card. Well that sucks. So everybody's gotta get rid of their fate. Okay. And the conjurer's turn, and she rolls a three, one, two, three. Now she's gonna do her conjurer thing. If the space does not have adventure cards, you may move a face-up adventure card in the same region to your space. You may only do this once per round. She's going to move that sword of light to her space. And she gets that. Add two to your strength and one to your craft. So that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. She goes to the tavern. She rolls a three. She loses gambles and loses one gold. Cleric's turn. One, two, three, four, five. She goes to the graveyard. She loses one life because she is good. <coughs> Conjurer's turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. She goes to the woods. Horse and cart. All right. She got a horse and cart as a follower. She can now carry eight extra objects. Well, that's great because she was at three there. So now it's the con dark cultist's turn. She rolls a one. She goes to the fields. Winter Wolf. She got to fight the Winter Wolf with a strength of one. She has a strength of three. Ooh, look at that. That thing got a six. Plus one is seven. E. All right, armor. If you are defeated in battle and just lost a life, roll one die. Uh, nope. And so she did lose another life. Wow. That was so easy right there. That thing rolled a six. The cleric. One, two, three, four. She's at the chapel. Um. Either heal up to your life value for free, which she will do. She will heal back her life. And it is the conjurer's turn. She draws a card. She's going to do the conjurer again and draw the winter wolf. She's going to try to fight the winter wolf. All right, four plus th two is six. Five plus one is six, but she does get two to her strength. And this one adds one to your strength. So she beats it. All that for a wolf that had one strength. It's terrible. Let's keep that as a trophy, the dark cultist. One, two, she goes to the plains. See here, Wrathborn Witch, Craft of Four. Okay. All right. She has a Craft of Three, and this thing has a Craft of Four. And it looks like uh, she's going to lose this, but she can roll for her armor, and she does not lose a life. And now it is the cleric's turn. Draw one card. Ebony Sentinel. The Sentinel cannot be evaded. Any good or neutral character who enters the space during his move must end his movement and encounter the space. Okay, has a craft of six. She has a craft of four. All right, let's roll. Oh, wow, all right. Six of four, ten. She beat this thing. So she gets it as a trophy. And the Conjurer. One. She's going to draw one card. Event. A magical vortex absorbs all spells from every character. Each character spells and this magic must be placed on the discard pile. So she lost her spell, which was a magic portal spell, which really wasn't that good anyways. But she will get to gain another spell and it will be a retribution. Hmm. That might come in handy. So it's a Dark Cultist. She rolls a two, and she gets fills, draws one card. Witch's Broom. Whenever you move during the night, you may move. Okay, well, all right, well, we got to get rid of that one. All right, Glory Seeker. Okay, strength of three. She has a strength of three.
She can make it psychic combat though. Well, it's just gonna be the same thing. All right. And she beats this. Okay, so she gets that as a trophy, and then she gets to roll a die, and she gains one fate. So she gains her fate back. The cleric. Five, one, two, three, four, five. A lunar witch. All right, this thing has a craft of three. She has a craft of four. And she beats it. Okay, and so part of the lunar witch is she gets to get a spell, and she beat it, and she got a curse of the werewolf spell. And now she will trade in this craft And she will gain one more craft. Okay. The Conjurer's turn. One, two, three. She goes to the tavern. Four. Gamble and win one gold. Okay. And the Dark Cultist. One. It's at the village. Ah, let me see. All right. Health. Heal up to your life value at the cost of one gold. She doesn't have any gold. So she's going to see the mystic. She rolls a five and she gains one craft. She gains a craft. And now it's the cleric's turn. Four. One, two, three, four. She goes to the fields. And she faces Saber Two Tiger, which has a strength of four. She has a strength of three. So we're a tie. And let's see for armor. Well, no, it's a standoff, so that didn't happen. And now it's the Conjurer's turn. And she will make that card come to her, and she's going to fight it. Ooh, man. Two, four. Whew. Okay, she will lose one life here, but she loses it from the self portrait. Cast after you have been defeated or had a standoff in battle or psychic combat. Ignore the result and immediately attack again. Ah, still lost. And she loses a spell, but she will get another one. It's a vortex spell. Now the dark cultist. One. She goes to the fields. All right. Wolf Spain. After rolling the die for the werewolf's chart. Well, okay. We won't be doing that. Um, this is a lantern sprite. The lantern sprite will remain here for the rest of the game. Take a secret look at the top card on the adventure deck and place it face down in front of any character of your choice. At the start of the character's next turn, he must place that card on top of the adventure deck. Okay, Let's see what that is here. So, ooh, yes, vampire prince. So we will put that in front of the cleric. Cleric goes one, two, three, four, five, and the cleric ended up going to the village. How about that? Three ignored. The conjurer. One, two, three, four, and now she has, uh, she don't have to roll one die here, except the Craigs. She rolls a five, safe. <laughs> it looks like the Dark Cultist is going to get a bit of her own medicine. One, two, three, four, five, six. She has to draw one card. Holy cow, and she has to fight this vampiric prince. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, this is a nasty guy, too. All right, well, no, she's going to spend a fate token and try to re-roll that. And she gets a two, and she's going to lose. And she's going to lose one life, and then if she has to lose a follower's life, and so she lost both of her lives, and she is dead. So, already in the first round, kind of like we've done before, we've had a death. The Dark Cultist is out of the game. And so we'll continue next round and see... Will it be the cleric or conjurer that moves on? See you then.